cameras have been invited inside the prison service's acute psychiatric unit. Considered the most difficult group of psychiatric patients in the country, the film observes their life and that of the healthcare officers in an intimate and truthful way. Hence, there are sequences and language which some viewers might find disturbing. It's very frightening to hear voices. It all happened around New Year's Eve. And I actually started, that's when I cut myself, because these girls, these two females I was hearing, one was more dominant than the other, and she was actually asking me to kill myself. She kept on saying, if you don't do it, I'll do it with you. Please, please tell. She kept on saying, I love you and I love you. And I started to get, I started to get panicky, frightened. But that's all the time I kept on saying to myself, they're outside, they're outside. Nobody would leave me. I thought he was in I ain't seen my family for donkey years. It's been donkey years since I saw him. I was fenced to a fire squad and I was saved by three minutes. I was strapped to a post and eight men for a fire squad. And the coffin was lying alongside of me. Twelve o'clock it was. I didn't want to go it again. I don't want to go through it again now. This particular unit is the only one of its kind really in the service. Um, we take them from all over the country. Usually, they're guys that haven't managed the system too well. Or perhaps you could say the system hasn't managed them too well. You know, I actually thought I was a devil. And sat on the bed with blades to cut. To me, it's always been a sort of mortal sin to do yourself damage. Although I've seen people with the marks all over their bodies, and I had this feeling that if I was to cut myself, then they would heal as I was cutting. So I stopped from cutting myself, rang the bell and told the officer, like, you know, the devil in me, get me out of here. They come to us, usually with a pretty bad record of the sorts against staff. Problems of all sorts, really. It is difficult for them. We are a bit of a strange unit, I suppose. Our colleagues at other establishments see us as a bit of a strange group of people. But equally, the inmate group do as well. My whole enthusiasm and interest in the trip is gone. We should never have come. Man has no right here. You've been listening to episode three of Journey Into Space. I'm the creme de la creme of murder. One of the fleets who called me, the first thing he told me was, you're the murder. That's why I'm the creme de la creme of murder. Morning, Peter, you look shattered. <laughs> I'm not everywhere, actually. Oh, dear, what a shame. Right, thank you. A cup of tea. Oh. All right. Let's have a do some garlic again, please. Right, I can smell it. Start of another day. Books. 
Say go, Martin, please. Come on, three five. Anyone else wanted to think a little about it? Yeah. What do you want? Single cell. You want a single room? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. yeah. I do. You don't look comfortable in it, like a bloody bush baby. Well, for the last six years I've been in a single cell. It's just shocked to me, isn't it? Yeah. Just me head in. What do I do all day? I know what it is. What do I do what? I know what it is. You can't knock one out, can you? <laughs> uh, that's what it's all about. Okay. You do it all the time, you do. Hey, listen, if I didn't knock one out, I'm surprised, I'm surprised you can bloody see it nowadays. I'm going to bar and knock one out three times a week. What's up with you? Yeah. That's <laughs> 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 bloody market, but no, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Eugene's playing up just a little bit. Yeah. Um, he seems okay this morning, but uh, a bit out of character, really. He went for Phil last night, for some unknown reason. It's quite disturbed, though. He appears quite normal during There's the There's a lot bubbling away, yeah. a lot. Um, we haven't seen the full potential there, I don't think, yet. Can we just play it by here, okay? You want to hear else? Morning, Gary. Good morning. How are you this morning? All right, cheers. I'll see, I'll see you later about some mode. Is the medication too much? No, that's all right. Yeah. He has medication, it's fine. Yeah, I'm just down in line. Right. We'll call you up to see Dr. Shansh very shortly, actually. What, today? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank Within you. the next half an hour. Yeah, okay. I'll go up in a bit. Most of the people that we have are very inadequate people who have never coped with life outside. And when you come into prison, their problems um, uh, problems get worse. They have no uh, contact with the families, like they make visits, but that's once in once in two weeks or once a fort, once a month. Other problems, they're worried about their children, they're worried about their girlfriends going with other men. So the stress factor is high, so they become uh, ill. What's happening with me? What's the plans? Tell me, I don't know what's going to happen with you. The original plan is you came from Bristol for two reasons. One is Dr. Roland wanted me to have you in the hospital immediately because mm. she thought you were a suicide risk. As you know, you don't want to live and you have made several attempts to take your life. Yeah. Right? Medication is not the answer to all your problems. Being in the hospital is not the answer. You've got to talk about your problems. Yeah, well, I don't, if I don't want to talk about my offence, because I can't talk about my no. offence, they don't make me talk about no, my offence. No, no. I noticed that you started talking to Mick Evans yesterday, yeah. one of the officers here. So you start beginning to trust people. You feel that people care about you and will are prepared to help you. Once you get comfortable with that, probably we can look into sending you over to one of the wings. How long, how long will I be on this hospital for then? About? Um, it, it depends on how it depends on how you progress. If you feel that you are comfortable, you are no more suicide risk. Now, when you came, we we kept you on a 15-minute watch yeah. to see how you are behaving. Then we put you on a half-hourly watch for the next couple of days. Um, well, I'm not suicidally now, right now. It's a uh, tricky yeah. moment, you know what I mean? Right. We we don't think you're actively suicidal now. No, I'm not. Mm. I want out that ward. You want out of that ward. Mm. I need a single cell. I can't out that ward. There's no way, you know what I mean? Listen, mm. music depresses me. Mm. Really has. Right from when I was a little kid, mm. music has already stood my head in and made me very, feel very sad, mm. you know? Mm. And they've got their radios blaring out, you know, mm. with the music on, and it just makes me feel sad. Makes sad all the time, you know? Mm. If there's any chance of that? Right. Number three's out, yeah? <laughs> <I'm noticed. laughs> the thing is, when people are a suicide risk, we like to keep them in shared accommodation so that uh, well, have sure you, have not. you have support from the others. So let me talk over the people. We don't yeah. want them disturbed anymore. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Cheers. And we'll discuss that on Thursday about uh, single cell accommodation. Yeah, that's quite yeah. a Okay. Okay, for medication, Peter, his uh, thing goes on till the 9th, so we'll leave it. So we're a bit of luck, you know what I mean? If I keep 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 banging at it, keep having a good crack, these will help me sort my problems out, help me come to terms with my crime, stop me from thinking about killing myself all the time. That, that's that's my last resort, you know. That's that's my hope, because I know I can get out of it any time I want, you know. Any time I want to end all this, I just bosh, I can swing, swing from the bars. I've done it before, but failed it, obviously, you know what I mean. But I know I can do it. Easy enough. 
I can't come to terms with me offence, You know what I mean? I killed and hurt a family fucking close to me, you know what I mean? Nice, nice to me. But I didn't really want to hurt. But coming to that, I just can't do it. You know what I mean? It's on my brain all the time, if you know what I mean. Thinking about it, clocking over, seeing the offence all the time. And I can't just go to anyone and talk about it, you know? And it's been nearly six years now, man, and I still can't do it. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it. This is, this is just my last hope, you know what I mean? It's either this or so I'm going to have to talk. Hello, go in. Carol, that's John. Good morning. Mm -hmm. What diet are you? Normal. Normal diet? The way society treat or has treated mentally ill people is to put them behind a door. And the system has done very much that over the years. What we've tried to do is move away from that and keep them out of doors. See you. You put somebody behind a door who's mentally ill, it doesn't go away. It remains there. In fact, it gets worse. Um, so we keep them out as much as possible. We try to involve ourselves with them, uh, communicate with them, allow them some space to move around. Uh, and perhaps that's where the system has failed. We've kept people locked up too much. So you're going in room three, all right? Just, just so we go. Are you taken? Yeah, I've got him because I've got his gear down there for you. We only have 26 places really and um, there is quite a wait in this. Uh, we're taking pretty dangerous guys uh, who are causing problems. Doctors around the, around the prisons want to try and get their, their guys to us as soon as they can. But there's only so many spaces. I think what you're up against was, just like everybody else who comes here, is, is a bit of a cultural change, that's all. <coughs> you know, I mean, you've had some bad times with staff, had you? Yeah, some right bad times. So? In most of the mix. But that's a bit of history, isn't it? Yeah. It's the now we're talking about. Yeah, but you, you just didn't expect it. Well, I did. You know what I mean? But it didn't come, did it? No. So did that screw you up? Yeah, it did. It did me head in. So what do you think? What do you think we're doing? Nice, helping. Yeah, but what do you think we're doing? Playing games with you or what? Cheers, a nice one, mate. Well, at first, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't really know the score, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? All this kindness and whatnot. How am I supposed to know? Yeah, that's fair enough. But it's everybody feels the same when they come in here. Yeah. The same for us, you know? Got to change. It's just taking some getting used to that, so it'll happen, won't it? Pick your man, trust him, and talk to him. That's yeah. all it takes. You'll get there, mate. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I will do. All right? Yeah, nice one. How do you find this place? Strange a bit. Strange. You've never been at Grendon before? No. Is this your first time in prison? No, it's not my first time. You've been in prison before? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're doing a life sentence. Yes. How much have you done so far? About two years now. Mm -hmm. And where were you during these two years? I was in Bedford Prison. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm, I get that you have had a few problems in the past. Have you been in psychiatric hospitals before you come into prison? Only a, an outside hospital. Uh -huh. Which hospital? Kevin was that? General. Uh -huh. When was that? About three years ago. Mm -hmm. What was the problem then? Um, depression, mainly. Mm -hmm. why, why were you getting depressed? Circumstances that mm. lead up to coming in prison. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about it? No, really. You want to leave it for the later time? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Right. Uh, how are you feeling at the moment? Okay. You're not depressed? No. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that in the past you tried to kill yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it when was it when you were very depressed yeah, at that time? Fine, mm -hmm. yeah. 
When was the last time you hurt yourself? When was it? Yeah, when was the last time you ever tried to hurt yourself? Uh, it was that time when I was in um, Bedford Prison. Bedford Prison. Uh, yes. Three years ago. Three years ago. Mm. I think you're a lot better than what you were in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Mm. Are you the main doctor here? Sort of, yes. I'm the only doctor here. You're but the only doctor? Here, in this place, in this unit. Yeah. Uh, but we have doctors in the main prison. There are four other doctors. Oh, Why? Why did you ask that question? I don't know. I just just thought, you know, normally prisons or units like this, normally more than one doctor, isn't there? Uh, more than. We have a visiting psychiatrist, like how Dr. Pinto came to see you at yeah. Bedford. There's a visiting psychiatrist. So if there's any problem that I can't help you out with, we can consult uh, Dr. Bullard. All right. Mm. What's your name? Dr. Shan. Shan. Oh. Right. I've been here four months, and this is the best prison I've ever been to so far, the 10 years of the life sentence I'm doing. I was lucky at coming here, but I think they realised in the dispersal system, I was just about to flip my lid and go into one. And in other prisons, treat you like shit, if I can put it that way, without being personal. They are disordered, that's the reason they're with us. So we're talking about a disorder rather than just pure badness. I mean, there are people in the system who are just pure bad as well. They come here and we look at the disorder rather than the badness. Unfortunately, the system itself has probably seen that the presentation of the illness uh, has developed into a violent state and they've ended up in punishment box. In most of the places I've been, in the blocks where I've been, I've just blanked the screws and I don't talk to them and I just play games with them like, if they wind me up, I, I put little bits of shit through their door. I went down there, told them I couldn't stand their shitty nick, and told them that if they didn't move me out of their shitty nick, I'd give them reasons to move me, because, i.e., someone would severely get injured and it'd probably be a screw, right? And uh, when I was in the block, they said, oh, yeah, we've heard that before and all that, and then a few of the lads there started smashing up the cells, and I was one of them, and then they come along and said, all right, we'll put you in this strip cell, and I said, well, please yourself. That's not that's not going to stop me. So they come about 12-handed, crash the door open, in comes they all fly in with their shields and everything, and they get me outside the cell, march me up to the corridor, and there's about another 12 screws waiting outside the strong box doors, and they throw me in the strong box. Well, <laughs> they had me... They couldn't say I was under, uncontrollable at that stage because they had me enough-handed. But to take insult and take the piss out of it, they decided to put me in a body belt, which is a belt around your... All at your back, tied up with a padlock at the back with two little handcuffs here on either side where you can only move your hands to that much. So they started laughing at me, saying, you'll be all right now. So to, to show them that they couldn't beat me, I just done a big shit on the floor, and with my foot, I wiped it all up the wall and the door and all that. And when they come in, I said, how about that then? I said, you can put me in here and you can dose me up with medication up the arse if you want and give me the liquid cost, and you can beat me up and all that. I said, but you won't break me. I said, because I've been in too long and I'm so determined the way I deal with you people that it's a hate relationship. It's very hard for them. They have problems with staff all over the system. When they first come in, they see us. We're still wearing uniforms. Uh, they're anxious about us. They wonder what we're actually trying to get to. The common thing is you're playing mind games. We don't play mind games. We don't have to. Um, within a matter of days, they themselves see the relaxed atmosphere and the way the staff are relaxed. So it makes a nice change to see you in a nice, pleasant sort of mood. Oh, thank you, Eric. Yes, well, he does, and I can't understand why he could have been like this other times. When you're effing and blinding at everybody. Now, now you're making accusations now, Eric, aren't you? It's true, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice to have you like you are. Isn't it? Oh, this is one-sided, bollocks. Did you ever get this at the old place? Yeah. Where you were before? No. But do you feel that you, when he was in dispersal next to Molina, do you feel that you sort of build up a bit of a reputation for yourself? Well, I didn't want to, but you got to watch about you got a lot of nutters running around the place, you know. People are never coming out. They know they're never coming out. So, you know, to make a tool out and stab you, cut your throat or whatever, you know, it's nothing to them because they know they're not coming out. The only way they're coming out is in a box. It's just a crazy place to me. It was one big hospital, and I just wanted to get out of it, you know? And, um, 
Well, after a while, I went down, I seen the appeals and the governors and what have you, and they won't move me, so um, I let it rip, you know. I had a couple of scraps and hit some screws and that, and um, next thing you know, I was out. I was brought here to Grendon Underwood, you know. They put you in a body belt, you know, you're defenseless, your hands are tied, they do what they want with you. I was in a van, face down, all the way coming here, twice. You know, so the people sitting on me, blowing fags down in my face, everything. You know, it was pressing the heel of his shoes into my biceps, you know, and, and you struggle, your, your hands become cut and swollen. They have to put him on, uh, on an escort with ten, about ten officers, body belt, and uh, what we call the change, you know, they, they've got ankle straps with uh, handcuffs, and it's the maximum sort of um, restraint the years on ex escorts. We've seen him when he's been a handful, and as you see him now, uh, he's at his best. And now he's thinking about the future a little bit, what's going to happen to him in the future. Uh, but he realises that if he goes back to a conventional prison, then he, he may be back to square one again. How many people go out on the streets at night down the west end of London and all Manchester, Liverpool, get six or seven or ten pints of booze down and go outside and start stabbing people up and all that? There's drugs in prisons, there's drugs in every single prison. And the screws know that there's got to be drugs in prison. Because as Bill said, as Bill said and Andy said, there's people in prison, and I'm such a one in calibers, right? I'm doing a 20 rep, I've still got 10 to go, so there's a bit of light for me, I'll be 50 when it expires. But like Bill said, there's some people in prison of 30 or 40 years of age who are never going to see daylight again. So if the screws took away the only bit of pleasure, which is cannabis, and helps them to relate and let their inner visions out, and helps them to cope with their sentences. If the screws took them away, there'd be no rules on the prison. And that's the reason why the screws let it go on. The drop-in centre is a meeting place, both for the patients and the staff. It's their place. Um, they need a place of their own. And they can come and go as they please. And that's something that is rare in prisons, that you can come and go as you please. Within the confines of the building, obviously. I'm telling you, the what we basically try to do is to allow the disorder to develop in a more natural way rather than a response created within a prison environment. You can literally do what you like there. You can shag bush if you're queer, you can drink hooch, you can smoke yourself to pieces, you can even jack up on the landing with a full flare of screws. They don't care there because it's a no-go area as far as their own office is concerned, because it's a nut house, right? It's where they send the, the prisoners, who are they with class, as being subversive and troublemakers, and they just sling them all into one big shit pit, which is a cesspit, and let them cut each other up, and let them do it, leech off each other and sponge off of each other and take diabolical liberties within the system and they don't care. But you go to other prisons and, and, and drink hooch, they start putting a clamp down because they don't like you, do they? Because it makes people fight. Because it makes people fight. But they love you to have your dope and all they do is come round the cell at half eight at night or nine o'clock at night and they see everybody in there laughing and joking and sitting around on the bed puffing away. They just whack the door away because they just want to get home. The last time we felt depressed, he cut himself very badly. He had, uh, he had to go out and have about 100 stitches. So now when he says he has his suicidal feelings, we take it seriously and so we put him in the unfurnished cell for a while till he calms down. My biggest worry is whether you'll cut yourself like how you did last time because you, you really ended up with about 100 stitches, you remember? Are you likely to do it or you, would you be able to ask for help? He's prone to very rapid mood swings and now he's already feeling better being away from other people so we put him out. If in the night at 7.15 when the others are locked up, if he still feels that he's going to hurt himself, we're likely to keep him there. He get more observation there than in the dormitory where there are recesses, they can go into the recess and hang themselves or cut themselves. I always feel more secure in there. Knowing me so. But um, it's nice to get away, especially when you get paranoid. You get paranoid, people 
to start talking about him. What are you thinking of talking about her? I can't help it. You know what I mean? I just get anxiety. And that's when I either start wanting to cut myself. And then all different thoughts come back. Like me crying. I want to punish myself for what I've done. You know, I mean, for manslaughter, like, you know what I mean? It's all tied up in, in emotion. Paranoia as well, but I just can't help it. It's, it's something I, I can't control. If I could control them, I'd be okay, mate, but uh, I could be all right one minute, go away somewhere, come back, and we'll be back again. I don't want to die. I just go into myself. You know, when, when other people are starting to talk about me, or maybe they ain't, I don't know. I just, I just go into myself, and it ends up going in front of the doctor. Sally? Right? Good night. Good night. Happy you See you See you tomorrow. What do you want to do? Take it round or just call them up? Hey, it's, it's in the office. She told you to do the scrub. You're just going to from the kitchen, all right? In the office, They only said six look after people. You say look after people in the fucking thing. Every day is quite a long day up there. From the mill times, they're getting the, the mill to go into the TV room. Uh, this is quite a quite a lot of tension. Yes, as you know. And um, when there's probably new stuff coming on in the evenings, uh, they tend to sort of play up a little bit. It'd be very helpful if we had certain powers that perhaps external hospitals had. There are people walking our landings who are unmedicated, who need to be medicated, therapeutically medicated. So what we have are guys that are inappropriately medicated quite often, i.e. they will take a medication occasionally and then they'll choose not to. We don't enforce medication, we're not allowed to. <laughs> Where's your bed gone? Don't know. You don't know? Uh, yeah, come. Yeah. 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 You better put it back in there. Right. Hey? Where have you hid it? Where have you put your bed? No. <laughs> Who's got it? Ah, yeah, here it is. There's no headboard on it. There's no headboard. No headboard. There's no headboard. Head out the window. Is that because you bang it at night time? No. Eh? Put a headboard on there. Put a headboard on there. Eh? Put a headboard on there. Put a headboard on there. Is out the window. Yeah. Every day the same. No, you know that's not right. Come on. Make the lady figure for everybody here. Come on in. No. I don't want to watch. Eh? Come on. I want you to push me like always. Because you're not like always, is that right? Yes. Oh, right, okay. We're going to play silly games. We're going to play silly games. We're going to play silly games. Yes. Punch, punish all the time here. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? It's not true. The officer here punishes people all the time here. No, they don't. Yes, they make the figure to live here. No, they don't. <clears throat> Whatever you can say is true, my friend. We don't force medication. So what happens is a guy will go to an outside hospital if we have him sectioned and he goes off to one of the big hospitals outside and they will give him medication, whether he likes it or not quite often. He will then have a remission in illness and it will look like there's some sort of a cure. They will then send him back. He's serving a life sentence or he's serving a 15 year sentence. He'll come back to us and of course immediately then refuses medication and deteriorates. But there is a vicious circle involved in it. Let me talk to you.
Phil. 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 Can you turn it down a bit, mate? So it was that easy, wasn't it? Why do you have to go through all this? It's all right. I'm You're okay, are you? Yeah. Just take yourself a little bit of a break, all right? We'll be back later on and sort you out. Okay, mate? I'm all right. With a bit of luck, he'll just cool down, okay? We'll go back in about half an hour, and he will then move down of his own free will. Basically, because of a lot of abuse in the night, um, it was for his own safety. If he'd carried on the way he was, one of the others who he was abusing quite badly, he'd probably done him some damage. So it was for his own good. He got a little bit stroppy when we wanted to move him, and it had to be done that way. It's calmed down now, as you can see, so... In about half an hour, we'll be back down there, sort him all out, okay? No problem. He was banging and ranting, banging the wall, calling me black bastard, cool nigger, and telling me about my mother. He's lucky I didn't go in there and strangle him in his fucking yeah, mind. I think you were very restrained, Bill, I really right? do. You know, he, he, and this is the first time, you know, the, the first time he'd done it, I, I just didn't I pay no attention, but I can't keep on like this. So what are you actually suggesting? Well, either Richard gets beside me or somebody else, but... I've got to put him into a room, Bill. He must go into a room because we've had his own behaviour. Him? Yeah, yeah well, if he's going in there, when he's cooled down, take him out and put him in there. <laughs> OK, we'll look at that option. Because I'm quite... Do you know what I mean? I don't want him back, back, back next door to me. So I'm going to end up strangling him. Well, let's hear what you're saying. We'll look at that option you know, later You're on. calling me a black nigger, black bastard and all this, you know what I mean? He's ill, Bill. Yeah, I know, but he, he should keep it to himself, man. You can't, mate. <laughs> what you're getting out there is the disorder. There might be a bit of badness as well, but there's a disorder there, remember? He didn't take his treatment last night. Well, no, no. We don't force it, do we? I can't force him to take well, treatment. As long as you don't get back beside me, that's cool. I don't want him beside me. I'll strangle him. I know what you're capable of, mate. You've done very well, Bill. All right. All right, let's sort that one out, mate. Yeah, all right. Why were we abused to the last night? Well, you know he's a dangerous guy. He could have done you some damage. You're making reference to his family and everything. And then why the pop at me this morning when I'm talking to you? I'm sick of this hospital and I shouldn't be in here. I 
I've got no reasons for being in this hospital. Yeah. I've got no reason for moving. I shouldn't be in here. Well, I suppose a lot of guys will feel the same, but it's the way it is, man. It's smarter with the name. It's smarter with the name. Yes. There's no yeah. worries. And just I want to do what them saying is doing this. It would have been so easy if you'd just come down easily this morning, wouldn't it? There's no point having to go at staff, you know that. Take a bit of a break now, right? Calm yourself down and we'll sort it out later, all right? But you're going to have to come downstairs now for your own safety, you know that, don't you? You still have your, your own room, don't worry about it. Okay? Just take yourself a break. Calm yourself down a little bit. Man, is that a right. order, man? He's out of order. If he's mad, keep it to himself. No, it don't work that way, Bill. It's an open unit, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I, I, I know. People away. You know that. But not even, you know, 10 o'clock at night you're supposed to switch your radio off, yeah? Yeah. From the minute he was banging up, he was banging. But you're looking for It'd rationale be... from the guy. The it... guy's mentally ill. That's what I'm trying to get through to you. He's mm -hmm. mentally ill, man. You'll be dropping, Bill. I know it's made you angry. You didn't have to put up with all that sort of grief you had yeah, last night. I know. And everybody else down here Bill, as well, I understand. Yeah. He's mental, mate. Yeah. Like okay. Terry said, he's up his head. Listen. What? You're just as <coughs> crack as you are. I forget him. I'm as crack as you. Yeah. There's mad people and there's mad people. Sort of. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hey? There's mad people and there's mad people, right? Yeah. You know, he shouldn't be in this kind of mad institute. And where do you fit into that then? Right? What do you like right? away from here, Bill? Listen, when I go back in the system, I do this for ages before I blow. All right, I let things build up. Like last time, I was in Maidstone. I explained to the bloke I wanted to change the job because I wasn't feeling right. Mm. All right? He didn't listen to me. The only time he listened to me is when I took a, a stapler to staple his nose. That's the only time he started to listen to me, and I went straight down the block and out. Do you know what I mean? I was down Parker's. Mm -hmm. oh, Parker just made me worse. I ended up chewing him. I give you shit, Bill. I mess with you, don't I? I play with you? It's yeah, different. but not the way they play with you. They play with your fucking head, Bill. It's different. Mm -hmm. Easy to play with your head. It's like a bloody beach ball anyway. Yeah. Anyway, is it solved? Yeah. Are you yeah. calmed down yeah. now, well, are you? Sure. Yeah. What I'm about. Hey, yeah. let, get off. He's out, he's out of my way. He ain't going, you know. Yeah. Now, listen, can I, can I have the normal pledge? No yeah. damage to the guy. No, no damage to the guy. No, I'm serious. I'm going to touch him. I've got nothing to touch him for now. What about you, Jock? No damage. No damage. No damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what? No, I don't need damage. He's going to be left alone, isn't he? Yeah, I ain't going to touch him. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. If he keeps you out banging up, but he'll get fucking chained. I can't make any guarantees. Um, yeah, all I want to know is if you're doing any damage. He'll be all right, Bill. Fair enough. He's, he's, he's away from me, and that's all that I want. That's all that I want. A bit of peace. Get the answer easy, Ron, you do. We're talking about the answer easy. He was banging away until 12 o'clock at night. This was what he was doing. Nice little bit of psychodrama there, innit? That, that hey. was till 12 o'clock at night he was doing that. Keep it up, I'll Wait. put you in the bloody strips as well. Honestly. Well, Gus was going to do the guy some damage, um, and that can mean several things. It can mean hot water, it can mean uh, excrement over him, it can mean all sorts of things. So what I've done is I've gone down there and got a pledge off of Gus uh, and the rest of the ward. We've done this before, um, and usually they keep their, keep their pledge. In fact, they exclusively keep their pledge. It's a bit of a, an honour thing, really, you know. Uh, they've said they're not going to damage you. Um, it's good enough for me. I've had a word with all the other lads. It's finished, all right? It's all over with last night. All right? Okay. Try not to abuse people like Bill. You know, it's like buying a bloody locomotive, isn't it? Ain't very sensible. The guy's got a lot of potential, so keep it cool. Right, Mel's going to go with you. Sort your gear out, take it downstairs, sweet as that, okay? Nice. All right. All right, now you're okay, please. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Off you go. Sorry. Thanks for cooperating. What never ceases to amaze me, actually, is the loyalty some of the chaps have towards us as, um, as people. Some friendship is forged, really, mm. between us as the staff and, and the guys as the patients. Jose! Exercise! Stop. It's gonna be all right. We've got 26 patients. They're dangerous before we even receive them. Dangerous in terms of their offence. Uh, of the 26, 
Nine of those are lifers. Uh, eight of those are in for murder. Uh, the ninth in for attempted murder. We've also got three arsonists, two rapists, and other assorted offences. So, you know, really, before we get them, they are quite dangerous customers. Then, of course, we get this added component that they're mentally ill and high suicide risk. We seem to have earned some reputation where the atmosphere that we, we offer, which we try to make as stress-free as, as possible, uh, gives those people that are considering suicide or who've recently uh, attempted to do so Time to think, time to consider uh, what do they want to do next. I think we did everything possible for Alan. You spoke to him and you gave a lot of comfort that day. I don't think you should feel guilty. I, I know you miss him because he was your good friend, but uh, we all helped to make him feel good that day. Yeah. Mm. I know everything was done to help him. Everything was done. He decided to take his life. He couldn't yes. live with what was happening to him. Dr. Sean, could you increase the lag actor for me, please? How did you sleep last night? I'm not sleeping very well. You're not sleeping well? Yeah. How many hours of sleep are you getting? Well, I go off all right, but I wake up in the early hours of the morning and I, I get afraid, you know. What sort of thoughts go through your mind at but that Alan. time? You think about Alan? Yeah. Mm. Last time I saw you, you had suicidal feelings. You thought yeah. that, uh, you should have been the one and not Alan. Yeah, I should have, so I thought. Mm. Mm. How are you feeling? No. Still is so. Mm -hmm. Now since Alan, his best friend, died, Alan tried to hang himself, and then he was out in the hospital and he died a week ago. Since then he's been having suicidal no, no. feelings. He wishes it was him and not Alan who died. So we are keeping him on a special observation, half-hourly observations. Uh, I don't think he'll do it. He's not actively suicidal, but nevertheless he needs a lot of support and supervision at this point in time. Sit yourself down, mate. Not feeling contact with Not yet. Though. Obviously, you've just phoned her up, I, I think. I phoned her and explained I couldn't go to the funeral. Yeah. Of my... Is she terribly disappointed that you can't? She was go? upset, crying on the phone. Was she really? Yeah. See, the very fact that you're serving ten years, um, you know, there is basically a general tightening up on people being allowed out from prison. And uh, although, like the governor, may or may not make his recommendation. Whatever, say he was to say, look, I think this is a good idea for this chap to go out on whatever it is. He must finally get the okay from the head office. And, um, you know, because they've been a bit choosy these days. Mm. Don't you know? Yes. Yeah. Notwithstanding the fact that all of us think it would be a good idea for you to go. You know, I mean, we've lost one of our patients and... Uh, um, he was I think in a funny, sort, no, not in a funny sort of way, but in a way we would like to be there as well, but with a representative, yeah. either yourself and obviously another member of staff. Yeah. Um, well, let's see when she phones up, Stan, and perhaps we can develop it from yeah. there. Maybe London can give them permission to me. Who am I? London. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed, Stan, you know. Yeah. Um, this has really affected you, hasn't it? The majority of the, the patients that we have have got previous mental histories. Um, I mean, obviously they've broken the law or else they wouldn't be in prison in the first place, but I suppose it could be argued that um, uh, if they'd have been in a hospital, if the places were still available, would they have broken the law? I mean, you know, one can sort of speculate on that. We're in the business of healthcare, providing a service for people in need through their illness, whatever form that may take. We're trying to get them into hospitals outside, into the NHS, be it special hospitals like Broadmoor, Rampton, or the local hospitals, and of course these beds are at a premium. The uh, potential receiving consultants are saying to themselves, possibly, well look, these chaps are being looked after, um, it seems quite well, with us here. Uh, why should he, as it were, he or she, have this added burden of extra patients taking up the beds that they would rather use for people in the community? But of course it doesn't help us with very, very difficult patients. I mean, the problem is, the problem is, Lashmi, that 
Yes, he is mentally ill, mm -hmm. and his mother's mentally ill, and she's mm -hmm. been in the John Connolly Hospital in uh, Birmingham, and he's been in the prison system since the age of 16. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't had a proper assessment. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty is, it's very difficult to do it here, isn't it? I mean, they, in Long Lot, and he was seen by two or three doctors, mm -hmm. And then he's transferred here. It's difficult to do it here. He's not settled here. He's paranoid about the prison system. Right. The funny thing is he wants to talk to doctors. Right. I mean, he wanted to talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't want to talk to people who aren't doctors because he's paranoid about them. Um, he's a bit paranoid about me. I'm part of the system which is trying to keep him in prison. Yeah, I think what we need here is a full-time consultant, if we're talking about looking after difficult mentally ill patients with the right support, occupational therapy for the patients, social workers. Um, you know, it must be a proper hospital. It, it isn't a proper hospital, is it? Um, we haven't got the facilities that an NHS psychiatric unit would have. But having said that, I feel that running a unit like this for the prison department alleviates a lot of uh, yes. problems yeah. for the department. We, um, we get about, I think, uh, 50 to 60, about 60 to 70 admissions a year. And out of that we manage about, say, about 75% we manage, we get them better, send them back to the other prison, so they go out from here. I, mean, I think that we accept that this is the way things are working at the moment. This doesn't stop me wanting to change things. At the moment, people, psychiatrists, are going into other pr prisons and saying, this person needs to be in the acute psychiatric unit at Grendon Prison. Now, I think they should be saying this person needs to be in the local or special psychiatric facilities outside of the prison system. So we're the sort of final place, and I'm looking at people who have by and large been seen by psychiatrists over months or years, and I'm putting a lot of pressure on hospitals outside to take them. Certain amount of success, not a great deal. But that's my aim, because I believe that ill people should not be in prison. And although this unit, I'm, we're very, we're proud of it. I mean, you're proud of it, aren't you? We would, we would like it to be better. That perhaps people who are mentally ill, definably mentally ill, shouldn't be in prison. However, it isn't utopia, and there are an awful lot of mentally ill people in prisons. They started tearing down the asylums many years ago in this country, the old asylums, as they were called and there isn't the space outside for them. Now, the problem is that the drive now is to, is to deal with mentally ill people in the community. Most of the clients we get, their behavior is so antisocial, you can't deal with them in the community. They're in for very severe and, and dangerous crimes, murder, arson, rape, uh, child molesting, all of those things. The public also have a right to be protected from that. So there is the other side, there's the person's needs and there is society's needs. The Department of Health is beginning to realise we probably need another maybe thousand beds, something like that. I and mean, it's difficult to be sure how many beds, but at the moment we've only got about 800 beds in secure units and we need double that, that number. I was put in the cell and as they put me in I just run up against the wall and crash me against the wall. He's so low down now, his self-esteem is so on rock bottom. Maybe after our talk and all the rest of it, maybe he wouldn't have used it. But who the hell knows? It's much better to have it in my hand than it is in his pocket. It's, a, it's one of the anomalies of being in prison, I suppose. A modelling knife. If you've seen the clock he's made up there. I mean, he's used this to, the, to make that clock with. And he could well just have used it to cut his wrist with. In a perfect world, there'd be units like this all over the country. But as an interim thing, what would be rather good is halfway houses, from us to perhaps a unit where they've got over a crisis, allow them time to feed back into the system. More successfully, we become family to them. They go back in that bad system, as they see it, and uh, they screw up. I need help to get over... Uh, um, what I've done against my daughter. Because um, I won't never be able to walk really back from that. But I've got to do something to uh, to try. Getting you straight is going to play back. Well, what did I tell you? She can be put back together.
you've got to be put back together. Yeah, but it's uh, another big worry I've got as well is um, it's my wife or my ex-wife. When you say worry, in what respect? Well, I, I, I don't know. I am worried about her. Mm. Um, well, I was going to say, you know, they don't always expect people to come to you. Well, if I didn't. You've got problems, if you want to talk, well, don't be afraid to go to well, people. Well, that's what I said. I, I, I tried on the wing a few times. It seems to me that you go into other establishments and uh, people are behind doors. There are staff about. They could be actually relating with those guys. You know, I can't stress enough that if you put somebody mentally ill behind a door, they don't get better. Um, I'm not saying we, we affect magic cures, but we get someplace with these guys. Hey. 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 Hey.